Hey guys, today I'm going to be going over CS50 Lab 1 populations. Now this is going to be a step-by-step -step guide for beginners. So please don't just skip to the code, don't just skip to the solution, but actually understand this step-by-step. -step. So let's first look at the information that they give us. So assuming we have a population of n llamas, n number of llamas, let's say, every year we gain n over 3 llamas as n over 3 llamas are born, and we lose n over 4 llamas as n over 4 llamas, let's say, die. So the, the population for the next year will be n, the starting population, plus n over 3 as we gain n over 3 llamas, minus n over 4 as we lose n over 4 llamas. So given that, Let's say how many years will it take to reach 25 llamas, ending population, if the starting population is 20 llamas, right? So for this, uh, let's go over a quick example. So the starting population, let's say in this example is 20. And let's say we gain 20 over 3 llamas. And when you put this in a calculator, 20 divided by 3 is actually 6.6667, whatever. But since we can't have 0.666 llamas, we can't have a fraction of a llama, we just ignore whatever is after the decimal. So let's say we gain 6, and we lose 20 over 4, and over 4 llamas, which is 5. So 20 plus 6 minus 5 gives us an ending population of 21. So now the ending population of year 1 carries over as the starting population of year 2. So now, once again, we repeat the same formula n over 3, n over 4. So 21 plus 21 over 3 minus 21 over 4, which is 21 plus 7 minus 5, which gives us 23. And once again, this carries over to year 3. Starting population 23 plus 7 minus 5, following the same formula, the ending population is 25. So we can see that it takes us 3 years to get from 20 to 25, right? So now, let's say the user inputs a starting size of 20 and an ending size of 25. Our program needs to output years 3. All right, so it seems pretty simple logically. Now let's jump right into the code. And one more thing we need to keep in mind is that the minimum number of starting population for llamas is 9. So there needs to be a minimum of 9 llamas. All right, so since we know there's first thing we need to do is prompt for start size, right? These are the notes given by the program itself. So prompt for start size, how do we do that? Well, first of all, we need to make a variable, right? We need to declare a variable called uh, for to capture the start size. And we can just call it a start for simplicity. You can call it anything you want. You can call it N even, you can call it M, G, whatever you want. I'm calling it start for logical purposes, just to help me kind of focus on it and know that it, that's the start size. So we call it int start, and again, I'm declaring it as an int because it's a number, right? We need to get some form of number from the user. So that's why it's an integer or a number. And now we need to use a loop to keep on asking the user for some input, right? So we can use a do while loop, which basically means do the following while a certain condition is true. So what do we need to do? We need to ask the user for some input, right? So let's say start equals and how do we get some input from the user we're well, using the get function so get underscore and we need to get an integer from the user so get underscore int and let's prompt them let's say uh, starting population starting population and so we need to keep on re-prompting them for a starting population if they input a number less than nine Right? That's just what, the, what they tell us to do. That's the instructions. So while start is less than 9, keep on prompting for a start size. And let's see how this works so far. Make populations. Okay, it compiles. Dot slash populations. Okay, so it asks us for starting population. Let's try putting in, let's say, 2. And it asks us again because it doesn't fulfill the condition. So let's say 8. And again, 8 is less than 9, so it's going to keep on asking us for a new starting population. Now let's say 10. And it doesn't ask us anymore, because 10 is greater than 9. So it seems like this part of the program is correct already. Now we need to prompt the user for a certain n size. 
So that's once again declared int called end just for clarity purposes. Again, you can call this anything you want. Um, and again, we use a do while loop because there is a certain condition attached to the end, to the number that we need to get. So we do the following while a certain condition is true. And again, end equals get underscore data type is int again, because we need to get a number from the user. Get underscore int, this time we'll say ending population. All right, and what should the condition be here? Well, thinking about it logically, the ending population always needs to be greater than the starting population, right? So we can have the condition here, while start is greater than end, keep on asking the user for a new ending population, right? So let's try once again, make populations. Okay, compiles, dot slash populations. Uh, starting population, let's say 10. Ending population, let's try to trick it, let's give it five. And it asks us again, because we said, we need to keep on asking if start is less than end. And in this case, we have input an end number, which is less than start. It's gonna ask us again. And let's try nine. And again, it asks us because nine is less than 10. And let's say 11. Okay, so it doesn't prompt us for an ending once again, because we have finally fulfilled the condition that end is greater than start. So we've gotten, we've gotten the user input. Now we need to actually make the program that calculates the number of years. And once again, kind of intuitively, you can sort of guess that we need another integer called years, right? But this time, we don't want to ask the user for the number of years, but rather our program needs to calculate that integer. So let's just say int years. And once again, we need to keep on calculating the number of years. We need to keep on updating the number of years, right? So once again, we can infer that we need to use a sort of loop. And just to keep things simple, let's use a do while loop, same loops as we used previously. So do the following while a certain condition is true. And so for this case, what do we need to do? Well, we need to calculate the population in the next year, like in the following years, right? And for that, if you recall from earlier, we have some sort of formula. n plus n over 3 as we gain n over 3, minus n over 4 as we lose n over 4. So from that, we can kind of infer, let's just try to write it in the encoding, right? Start equals start, right? n equals n plus start divided by 3 as we gain n over 3 llamas minus start divided by four as we lose n over four llamas. So every time this happens, we're basically telling the computer, hey, computer, update the starting population. And this is the value to update it to. Start plus start over three minus start over four. And this is just nothing more than what we've deduced in the very beginning here, which is n plus n over three minus n over four. So every time this happens, what do we need to do? We need to update the number of years, right? We need to add an, addi an additional year. So to do that, we can type year plus plus, right? So every time this happens, it's another year. So what condition should be here? While start is less than end. Okay, and why is this the condition here? Don't worry, I'm not gonna leave it at that. Let's actually look deeper into it now. All right, so why should the condition be start less than end? So let's once again, take the same example. If the user inputs a starting size of 20 and an ending size of 25, all right? So, and the condition is start less than end. So in year one, it's gonna check. Starting population is 20, is start less than end, so is 20 less than 25? Yes, so we add one year, as we said here. If this is true, then add one year. So then we'll go to the next year, where the starting population is 21. So is start less than end? Is 21 less than 25? Yes, so we add a year again. And then we move to the next year, and here the starting population is 23, just like we calculated earlier. So is 23 less than 25, is start less than end? Yes, 23 is less than 25, so add a year. And again, this is a loop, so it's gonna to go to the next year again. 
and here the starting population becomes 25. So is 25 less than 25? No, 25 is equal to 25, it's not less than 25. So here, the loop will not continue. So we don't add another year, and we stop the loop here. All right? So this is why the condition is start less than end. So hopefully everything's clear so far. And now all that's left to do is print the number of years. And for that, we use a very simple function called printf. Printf, let's say, years, colon, and we need to print the number of years, right? But we don't know how, but the number of years is not a fixed amount. It depends on the user input. So for that, we can use a placeholder, an integer, percent i. And the value percent i needs to take is from the variable called year, all right? So how we do that is we put comma year, which basically means that print the number of years that, is, that, was, cal that was calculated earlier. And so we do that. But if you notice now, the program is not quite done. And that's because every year, I mean, every time this happens, every time this happens, we're going to want to keep on adding a year. But what's the starting number of years? Well, the years start at zero. So we actually need to first initialize the variable year to zero. All right. So int here equals zero. And every time this happens, do a year plus plus. While, the con while start is less than end, right? So, so far, everything makes sense logically, hopefully. If it doesn't, rewatch the video, rewatch this part, or maybe leave a comment down below if you really don't understand. I can help explain it further. But everything makes sense so far logically. We initialize year to zero. We do year plus plus every time this happens while this condition is true. And then we print the number of years, finally. So let's try make populations compile the program okay everything's gone smoothly dot slash populations to run it okay starting populations let's say from the example area 20 ending population 25 and it says years three so it's correct uh, but just one stylistic issue here is that it's prompting me for the next line of code in the same line so we don't want that it looks not very pretty so let's make a new line here let's do backslash n for a new line and let's compile it again, make populations. All right, dot slash populations. Starting population 20, ending population 25. And now it looks nice, right? Everything is in one line, starting populations, ending populations and years. And it prompts us for the code in the next line. So let's just look at the instructions here. Let's try one of the examples just to make sure that our code is correct. Start size of 100. Wait, let's run our program again, dot slash populations. Start size is 100 ending population they want us to put a million and years should be 115 if our program is correct so a million ending population and year is 115 so our program appears to be correct but just to double check you can use you copy this it's from the i'll put the link down below but it's just from cs50's website you copy this and you paste it into your terminal window All right i've already done it so i'm not going to do it again but you can do it Check, make sure it's correct, and it should show everything green. And once you do that, don't forget to check the style as well, just to make sure there are points for style. So to maximize your number of points, your grade, you should check for style as well. And when everything's correct, all you have to do is submit. You do that by copying this code over here. So that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if this video helped. Comment down below if you have any questions, and I'll do my best to answer every single question. And that's all for today. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye, David.